Be Simon, I'm the CEO here at Best Practice, coming to you live with our Ask Best Practice. I think we're up to episode, uh, maybe we must be up to episode eight. Uh, episode eight of Ask Best Practice in our new format. And this is talking about the different things and trying to bring you uh, a realigned set of subject matter. We spent some time in the studio yesterday afternoon doing a cleanup, so you'll see our our uh, library um, was certainly a large part of our library here uh, on the shelf uh, right behind me. So these are lots of the different books that we include as part of uh, what we're doing here at Best Practice. So if you need a book recommendation on a particular topic, just reach out to me and, uh, and let me know. Uh, so I see uh, Barbara and John there live on LinkedIn. Good to see you guys come on board. And hello, Mr. Uh, the handsome Nick Fagan on LinkedIn. So we are streaming live on YouTube and LinkedIn and Facebook right now. And I've got dashboards of the comments on uh, LinkedIn and also on Facebook. So it's really great uh, for me to see some feedback in the comments. Uh, so if you want to let me know where you are watching from, it's good to know where our global audience is. We had a great global audience come in yesterday and equally lots of people that came on after and watched the recording after the event because you couldn't make it on time so so let me know where you are watching from good to see everybody here i've got shalika luke and cam here in the studio giving me some assistance as we go through and talk about these elements okay let's get into it there's lots to talk about with regards to management review for me personally as a practitioner in management systems risk management systems iso systems and running best practice uh, and and our work that we're doing with the next practice team and we've got nick fagan there on the linkedin feed if you ever have got questions around that uh, he's a great guy to reach out to so nick fagan there in the comments on um on LinkedIn, uh, please connect with him and reach out to him if you've got any direct messages around the kinds of things I'm talking about today. Uh, equally, you can send me a direct message too. Let's talk about the seven things. The very first most important thing that I wanna see you guys talking about in your management reviews is your dashboard, your company's dashboard. So your, your clear picture of your organization's performance. The ISO standards call that monitoring and measurement. We do really need to have a clear picture of how we're tracking. Now that you know may be difficult in the first round as you're starting to implement a management system and you're starting to get a handle around growing and controlling your organization. So we really wanna be asking the question, what numbers should we be looking at? Some of the numbers that you might choose to start to look at is what are the promises we are making to our customers? What is it that we are starting to say? What are we promising we'll deliver? What are the characteristics of our products and services? What are the kinds of things that you know we're going to be promising to our market? So what are maybe the six promises we make to our customers? And then what are the implied promises? So the second most important thing, if you like, that you want to be talking about is your legal and other requirements compliance if you like so are we meeting our service level agreements with our clients are we meeting any legislative requirements that we've got do we need to make any improvements it is important to be doing that internal due diligence and if you do that internal due diligence on where you may or may not be complying with uh, safety legislation or environment legislation or customer contractual requirements your management review is the internal secret process, if you like, to identify where you've got issues, where you need to strengthen your performance. And so if you do end up in an environmental prosecution, and I've been involved in a few of those, uh, your work in a management review to identify where you've got non-conformances or legal issues and, and the identified action plan and progress on that action plan later on get, is gonna be part of your defense uh, if you uh, if you get caught up in a compliance uh, issue, so I want to be encouraging you to be thinking about that as we go you know go through this process. So we want to be looking at our dashboard, then we want to be looking at compliance with our legal or other requirements and and reporting that up. In a small to medium enterprise, management review is the equivalent to a board meeting or an executive level management meeting. And so we don't want to be having two processes because we're duplicating and we're wasting money or we're, you know, we are wasting money on having two, pro two concurrent processes. So the true intent of say an ISO standard like ISO 9001 is that your management review is your, you know, your reporting of the performance of the whole organization up to people who can make decisions about the direction that we need to go. So I want you to keep that in the back of your mind that this is the board report and, and, and take it that seriously. 
The second biggest mistake that I see as part of this process with a lot of organizations is that management review is kind of a tick and flick exercise. Um, and that is, you know, you can get yourself through certification audits and you can pass certification audits if you like uh, with that tick and flick exercise. But the true, following the true intent of the ISO standards that we talk about here at Best Practice is that that really is the equivalent of a board report. So if you used an ISO system to run your organization, then, um, then you know, considering those kind of legal and other requirements um, is, is going to be, um, you know, part of that process to improve your organization. So as I work through these points in terms of the top seven things to talk about in a management review, the first things that we want to be talking about are the data inputs. So there's a common one that a lot of people talk about is the results of audits. The results of review by external parties or stakeholders. So if you're doing an internal audit program, if you're doing, if you're part of external auditing programs, if you're part of supply contract auditing programs. So if your, you know, if any of your customers come in and do reviews and checks on you or audits on you, if you're part of big, you know, if you're supplying to large multinational companies, they'll be coming out, they'll be sending people out to check in on you and make sure you're meeting their criteria. This is the third thing, if you like, in terms of the data inputs to management review that you want to be talking about. How are we going? How are we tracking along with regards to our internal audit program? Are we identifying opportunities for improvement? What are they? Are we identi you know, are our customers identifying issues we need to fix? What are they? Are we identif you know, what are those inputs? Are staff identifying suggestions? Are there any recurring, you know, issues that came come up from formal review processes? So that leads me into, I think, what are we up to? Number four now in terms of the top things to be talking about in your management review is to be starting to think about, do we have an issues list? Do we have a list of, uh, you know, little pebbles in our shoe that are, that are constant recurring issues internally on, in the organization? They're raised by people internally in the organization and there's something that is, you know, we need to deal with. So here at Best Practice, we'll call that an issues list and we'll have a recurring issues list and we'll be bringing that up. And so often I collect that list um, from my managers here in the team and all the different people that I work with. Um, uh, Sorry, I've just noticed that Stan Wall's up in Darwin today. Gee, you, you've gotten around this week. So I see your, your travels um, picked up again uh, there, Stan. So thanks for joining us and thanks for coming on the live stream from Darwin. Uh, if you have come online and you're watching us on either LinkedIn or there on YouTube, please let me know where in the world you're watching from. I've got a good Australian contingent today. Uh, go Aussies. So um, yeah, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button and um, let me know where you are watching from. I see there's uh, about a dozen people there on YouTube. So uh, let me know where you are watching from. So um, the issues list is, you know, here at Best Practice, we've got a recurring issues list. We leave it sitting there, things we can't solve, but we, you know, they're recurring. We need to be thinking about them and working on them and bringing attention to it. So that is something that sits on our, on our plan that we, uh, that we do talk about. Okay, you know, this, this, this next one is a bit of a challenging one. It's kind of similar to the last two, but it's, our, it's any complaints. Uh, any complaints or testimonials. So, so it's you know internal, external complaints, any issues. Um, those kinds of things are an important part, but they're not the major part. And I just want to re reinforce, if you don't talk about complaints, that's okay. I know a lot of you guys are like, you have to talk about complaints in management review, but you're kind of missing the point of the management review. It's a board meeting. It's the equivalent of a board meeting. It needs to be treated as such. And a lot of the complaints really need to have been already dealt with. They need to be already talked about. And really, you know, in a management review, it's only a minor component because it's really checking in uh, about whether there are any preventative actions. So any trends analysis, any preventative actions. So you wanna have your compliance process, uh, you know, well embedded in the organization with corrective and preventative actions happening all the time. And really it's just a, it's just a review to see if there's any trends, to see if anything needs to be added to the issues list. So we wanna talk about, you know, what is a mature 2025 management review look like? We don't wanna be doing, we don't wanna to continue to do 1990 uh, kinds of management review that you know industry's moving on business is moving on younger generations coming through where things are moving faster and faster and so we want to make sure that's part of our modern management system so I want to ask you that question what does a modern management system look like so that's um that's my segue into my next point 
So for the remaining, you know, one, two, three, because I think I've done four uh, components of your management review that you really should be talking about. Um, and I'm trying to bring some sort of, you know, real life business context to management review, not just following what a standard might say you need to do. We need to be really thinking about innovation. And we need to think, be thinking about what we're going to be doing to the future. So I want you to be thinking about the results of a SWOT analysis. So looking at strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And the management review is really the time to be bringing in that data and saying, what are our strengths? What are our weaknesses? What are our opportunities? And what are our threats to the organization? Remembering that this is strategic managers. And I think we've spent too much time over the last 10 to 15 years getting bogged down in ISO standards and missing the point of kind of running the business. So what are our, looking across all the parts of the business in marketing, what are our strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats? In sales, what are our strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats? What are the customers we want to pivot towards? What are the industries we want to be working with? Uh, looking at your finance part of your business, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Looking at the operational service provision part of your business. What are the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats? These are the elements that I want you to be going through and considering as part of management review. And they are the more broad intent of management review as part of, say, for example, an ISO 9001 quality management system. And that's where people, you know, these, these are... It's not mandatory, this is about best practices, pun intended, uh, for, for your management system. Okay, uh, good to have you on board, uh, John Schofield. Um, excellent, and uh, Puzzle Duck there on YouTube, from Melbourne, Oscar Bendigo, uh, good Aussie contingent today uh, with everybody looking at management review. And I hope anybody watching after the recording has finished um, that you're not with us live, please continue to let me know where you are watching from. And if you have got questions or there's things that you think need to be talked about in management review that I miss, please let me know in the comments. Okay, let's get on to number six. What am I up to? Uh, so I've done one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's talk about number six on the top elements. We've been uh, campaigning a book here at Best Practice called High Output Management. High Output Management. Uh, let me see if I can quickly see it in the library. Uh, yes, I can, stand by. There it is, High Output Management by Andrew Grove. Here it is. Uh, Andrew Grove, uh, in this book, he ran Intel. I talked about it yesterday in the live stream. It's quite popular here at Best Practice at the moment. The team are working through, uh, everybody's been given a copy to read of this book across the Best Practice uh, team members. Andrew Grove talks about, as a manager, you've really only got one job, and that is to motivate and train your people. And so the sixth part of management review, let me just pop that there for everybody. The sixth part of management review is to be talking about training and really strengthening training. And there's this, this personal accountability piece that I've been talking about with a lot of you guys lately, which is uh, refusing to blame anybody for anything and taking 100% responsibility for everything in your life. No excuses, it's about taking 100% responsibility and saying everything that is happening to me or for me or around me, what is my part in that and what am I gonna do about that? Not blaming people and saying, not playing the victim, it's about owning it 100%. So if you have not, if your organization is not hitting the numbers or you're not hitting the numbers that you need to be hitting and you're not fixing the things that need fixing and, and stuff's going wrong, it's about owning that 100% and hustling on improvement. So the sixth point is talking about training. And so as a manager, if your team's not delivering, it's about what more training can you do? Has your training been effective? Can you look at different training techniques? What's the most effective training technique or training style for the individual team members in your team? So that information is getting digested and absorbed. I've been talking about that more recently with a few people in a, in a, in a meeting I was in yesterday. So how is the training that we're doing, is the education and training we're doing in the organization being digested? Is it being absorbed in our team members? And often we will do what's easy for us, but hard for our team members. We spend a lot of time here at Best Practice actually making it harder, if you like, for ourselves uh, in the training techniques because we find they're more effective forms of adult education. So it's really thinking about what are the most effective ways that work, considering people's learning styles, but also having them, um, you know, being able to replay the information and embed the information. So we want to talk about training and competency. The final thing that we really want to be talking about in, in management review in terms of my top seven elements to talk about in management review is did we hit our goals? 
in thinking about, you know, we, we were back 12 weeks ago when we did the last management review. Uh, it's my opinion that management review should be done quarterly uh, to align with the business plan and align with the whole business world that does reviews on a quarterly basis and runs their businesses on a quarterly basis. We have Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4 in uh, North America that, you know, that is calendar year. Um, in countries like Australia, the financial year runs from uh, the end of June uh, so the 1st of July through to the end of June, uh, it's time stamped in the middle of the year and businesses run on quarters. And so it's my view that management review runs on quarters. And so it is the review of the performance of the organization and then how are we gonna tweak what we're doing in the organization to improve for the next quarter. So 12 weeks ago at the last management review, we said in thinking about the next 12 weeks, what does success look like? In thinking about the next 12 weeks, what went wrong? What could go wrong? In thinking about the previous 12 weeks to that, what could go wrong? And so the very final point in management review is saying, well, did the things go wrong that we said would go wrong? Did we prevent them from happening? Um, did we repeat any mistakes and issues and accidents from the previous quarter? Did we do them again? And the things that we said in thinking about the next 12 weeks, what does success look like? Did we achieve those things? We wrote down those goals. Do we achieve that? And so that's all of the things that are worth considering and talking about. That's the seven things that are worth considering and talking about in management review. We want to be thinking about, okay, well then what's the output? If management review is part of process, then what do we do next? Once we've sat down and we've raised our attention to these issues, what I'd like to talk about now is something that's documented in Scaling Up, which is this book here by Vern Harnish, uh, which we've been campaigning. You can buy both these books online for about $30. Um, so you, you, know, you, you can basically get our team of coaches at Next Practice to come in and coach you on this. We're more than happy to do that. We can put a proposal forward, but if you want the cheapest way to do this, uh, not necessarily the most effective, um, because I'd hold you, account, hold you to account in terms of whether you can actually achieve this by yourself. You may need some assistance. But what I want you to be thinking about is the output of management review is the update to your one-page strategic plan. And so then we're saying, well, what are our new goals for the next quarter? In thinking about the next 12 weeks, what does success look like? In thinking about the next 12 weeks, what could go wrong? In thinking about the last 12 weeks, well, we've talked about all that. That's all the seven elements that we've brought in. We wanna be moving the organization forward and growing and developing. And so the output of management review is a couple of things. It's an update to your one page strategic plan. It's an update to the business plan. It's a reset on the priorities for training. And it's a reset on any changes you might need to make to processes. And that is a strengthening of the data that you're collecting. So people, we need to train and educate and motivate people. We need to, are we looking at the right data and are we making improvements to our process? And that's what we talk about here at Best Practice. We talk about people, data and process sort of in three concentric circles. And they are the key elements, the, the foundational elements to a management system, people, data, process, what improvements do we need to make? And what do we need to be focusing on? So we should be coming out of management review with a renewed focus after discussion on the key priorities for our organization going forward. And something like scaling up gives you a whole bunch of recommendations and some guidance here uh, on about page 125. So that's the book Scaling Up by Vern Harnish on uh, how to write and update your strategic plan. So really starting to think about, you know, the kinds of things that we might be updating. I'll quickly read you the headings there uh, from that strategic plan. We might be making some adjustments to our core values, uh, some adjustments to our purpose, our brand promise, a big, hairy, audacious goal. And then we're checking in on our two to five year goals, our one year goals and our quarterly goals, the things we need to work on. And then we've got our KPIs down the bottom there and any ongoing issues that we can't sort of work on yet uh, because we haven't got all of the resources. Um, hey, Jacob, thanks for joining us. I uh, appreciate your late, no problems at all. Uh, good to have you guys all come on board. Uh, it's obviously being recorded, so it will be, uh, this video will be available on YouTube. As soon as we finish, it takes a couple of minutes to buffer and then the recording's there on our YouTube channel. It'll obviously be here on my LinkedIn profile as well. So Jacob, um, you can come back and watch from the beginning. Um, and uh, Ruben, thanks, uh, thanks for joining us over there in Los Angeles and California. Good to have you. Um, uh, uh, good to have you on board. Okay, John Schofield, um, a comment there. Uh, I'm assuming that's focus on control. Uh, so a focus on control is um, 
less so uh, something that I think is necessary uh, from sort of 2020 to 2025. Um, because we can just have a conversation about who, what, when, where, how, why. So we, we, in thinking about what's going to happen, so in thinking about the next 12 weeks, what does success look like? In thinking about the next 12 weeks, what could go wrong? The question is, what are we doing about that? And so a, tr- a document, for example, like a policy or a procedure or a work method statement, while important, uh, it's, it's only there for guidance to tell the humans what to do. And so with the people around us and the team around us, education, motivation and training, if they're motivated in the right direction and they're trained correctly, they don't need policies and procedures. So if we talk about control, I think it's good to talk about controls, but in the context of what are we going to do about this potential issue we could have, incident we could have. And so that is where generations are going. If, if you can appreciate that generations, you know, in the next five years, Anybody that's 25 years old right now is going to be 30 and they're going to be running the organization and they don't rely on policies and procedures. They don't look at paper. They work in paperless environments and they don't necessarily go to policies and procedures for guidance and advice. They don't read instructions. They go on YouTube and watch videos. Uh, They go on websites and do Google searching. And so modern management systems over the next five years the, the most successful model management management systems over the next five years will be uh, wiki sites. They'll be basically websites with text on it that are searchable content that people can go and search uh, and, and basically videos that people can watch. That's the modern version of a management system over the next five years because the individuals right now, if you think about my 10 year old son, uh, my son, he's turning 10 in February, he doesn't read paper he basically goes on YouTube and watches videos and then works out how to do things. And that's how they've been trained right now. And so the, 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 the documented policy or procedure is now redundant for the upcoming generations of people in our organizations. Now you could continue to use that, but you're going to have to do twice as much training with people in your organizations because the 25 to 30 year olds coming into your organizations now, they don't know how to read policy and procedure. So you're gonna have to teach them to read policy and procedure. Then you're gonna have to teach them to do their job. And so it's gonna be more work for us. For those of us that are not used to technology and need to grow and develop, it's gonna be a really big issue for you guys moving forward. So you must be embracing technology and you must be embracing modern tools. Because if I look at my 10 year old son, if he wants to search for a video on YouTube, he presses the microphone, I wanna watch a Lego video, and then YouTube listens, it writes down the text, it does the search and it brings up the video. So he doesn't even type. So we've got a generation of children leaving uh, primary school and going into high school who won't even need to type. So typing will be redundant in 10 to 15 years time. It won't be a thing that we do. Uh, It's something that I want you guys to be really thinking about. And so in our management reviews right now, we need to be really looking at our audience, looking at the individual people in our teams, looking at who's part of our organization and constantly adjusting. And that's why I recommend quarterly management reviews because we wanna be making small tweaks to our organization, making the guidance, the instruction manuals, if you wish, or if you will, for our organization, easier to search and easier to watch and easier to consume and digest so they have an impact on the organization. Um, um, Oh, I understand, sorry, I apologize. So um, yes, focusing on control. So John, um, yes, so uh, 100%. So in terms of actually owning everything yourself um, and, and accountability, um, yes, a hundred percent. So then you can focus on, you know, yes, what you can and can't control and, uh, internal and external a hundred percent. So it's about your part in it, obviously hundred percent. So, um, let me know where you are watching from. I see a few extra people have come online now on YouTube. Uh, let me know where you are watching from in the world. It's always very exciting for myself in terms of seeing what's going on, um, and seeing what's, um, you know, who's where in the world. And if you are watching after the recording, um, please let me know where you are coming from. This kind of stuff, the stuff I'm talking about in this session with management review is the kind of activity that we work uh, we work with clients and we help clients with in the next practice part of our business. Uh, Nick Fagan there watching live on uh, LinkedIn is the managing director of next practice. And there's a number of organizations in the group here, the best practice.biz group. And we have next practice who are a great team of coaches who can coach you through and facilitate your management review, 
get you talking about the right stuff, moderate the conversation. We can do that remotely on, on Zoom, for example. We can join into your management review from anywhere in the world on Zoom and we can facilitate that meeting for you so it has a high impact in your organization. So our coaches are all fully trained on uh, books like Scaling Up, following that system, um, and they can basically train you on how to use the, the guidance and advice. You don't need to go and buy templates from a consulting organization um, anymore to a significant depth uh, to set up a basic management system because books like Scaling Up and Google have got a lot of that stuff now for free. So it's really, I appreciate it's hard to find it and know what to use. So our coaches at, at Next Practice are there to help you learn how to Google and find the right things that are gonna help your organization. They're gonna save you a lot of money in terms of you know, finding useful things to use, uh, you know, not buying massive template systems that are kind of all generic that you'd need to customize. So following a system like scaling up is gonna help you uh, grow your organization, deal efficiently with the issues that come up and, and efficiently achieve your goals in the organization, you know, which personally for me, I think is really important. That's what I'm looking for as a CEO and a director of quite a large team. I'm looking for that efficiency. I'm looking for a time saving. I'm looking for cost saving and I'm looking for high impact management activity. Um, and that's kind of why I picked this book up because I judged the book by its cover. It was recommended to me and I went, that's exactly what I want to be training my managers. So my managers in my reports, the, the five managers that directly report to me, um, I want them to have high output management with their team members. And so those two kind of things are the things that I'm using to run uh, best practice and the best practice group. Um, 100% Nick, yeah, that's exactly right. Elevate the thinking and the value of the management team's collective thinking to drive the business, 100%. Uh, okay, any other comments? There's no other questions at this stage. If you have got a question or you'd like to make a statement or add to the discussion, you can use the comments there on LinkedIn. I've got a dashboard here, um, both on LinkedIn and on YouTube. So question for you guys. Has this been helpful? Has this session today talking about the top seven things for management review, has this been helpful for you guys? So fundamentally, we consolidate that all into the data that we're looking at in the organization and then the output. We need to understand that management review is a step, if you like, in the cycle of continual improvement, plan, do, check, act, if you like. Uh, but more formally, uh, if you treat it like a board meeting, you treat it like an executive manager's meeting, uh, then it's gonna follow the right intent. There we go, let's see how if that works. So you can see both those books. So um, that's gonna help you guys with, um, you know, with structuring your system and not necessarily looking to ISO for guidance, but looking at other more, man more modern management techniques for your organization. So that's what I'm, you know, I obviously use this whole library. All these are business books. Uh, this is about a quarter of the business book library that I own personally. It's my personal collection. Um, and, what, and I can go into different books for different problems, different challenges. Um, it's a lot of work to actually maintain this library because I do lend a lot of books out and they don't come back. Um, but uh, they are here and they are the things that I use for guidance and advice to help grow our organization. Okay. Um, I'm not seeing any other comments, so let me know in the comments if you're watching after the recording. Let me know where you are watching from. Let me know what's happening in your organization. Uh, if you need to reach out to me directly, uh, just reach out to me directly on LinkedIn. Um, and if you have got any comments or questions, uh, that would be awesome. Okay, we try to keep the Thursday sessions nice and short. It's been about 35 minutes. I uh, apologize for being a little bit late this morning, uh, a little bit going on. And we've got the dog in the studio who we've managed to keep quiet, which has been fantastic. Okay, so next week, I'm not entirely sure what the content is that we're gonna be talking about, but I do wanna do more Q&A. If you have got questions, if you'd like to make statements, if there's anything you'd like to add, respond to one of our emails or comment on one of our videos. Next week, I'm gonna be running a little bit more of a Q&A session. We're in the lead up to the summer break here in Australia. Um, oh, there we go. Good to talk to you this morning, David. So um, yeah, so uh, David, I'd highly recommend specifically for your organization, um, scaling um, and great to talk this morning, uh, scaling up 100% by Vern Harnish. Get yourself a copy of that. I've got more copies coming to the office. So if we do catch up in the new year, new year I'll give you a copy of that. 
Um, if you haven't had the opportunity, check out Clear Shield on Instagram. Great shout out there for David on LinkedIn. Uh, so maybe David, if you've got a, a link there that you can drop so people can check out your Instagram or your uh, LinkedIn for your organization, David gets to work with some absolutely amazing cars with his Clear Shield business. So check out all the supercars um, that you can get in Australia, go through and get uh, his Clear Shield treatment in his organization. Looks after those amazing machines, which is, uh, which is incredible. So good to have you on the live stream this morning, David. Uh, thanks for everybody else who's joined from all over the world. As we wrap up the recording, let me know where you have been watching from. Even if you are watching after the recording in the comments, I get to see all the comments on all the videos. So uh, thanks for joining us. Okay, if you've got questions next week, I wanna do more Q&A next week. So if you've got specific questions, I'll, the first five people with questions uh, that can get your questions across to me, either on direct message on LinkedIn or reply to one of our emails or send me a direct message on Instagram. I'll specifically be answering your questions uh, and I'll be going through um, those comments. A quick question there from Oscar. Um, is that any point that you can recommend educate the new crew to use the paper or is it pointless? I know we need to innovate, but also rethink. Um, um, but if you read, I think uh, that makes more sense. Look, Oscar, I totally agree. Um, I, I think that we are past the point of trying to educate people to read paper in the organization. Um, so they're gonna be reading uh, websites. So you know, over the next 24 months, if you can be building uh, a searchable site, uh, like on a go internal Google site would be the cheapest way to do that. I'd recommend learning Google Sites. I'd recommend learning Google Docs, learning Google Sheets. Uh, it's freely available. And, and I think what's important for you guys to understand, and I know there's a, people, a lot of people, sort of older school people using Microsoft. All of the kids are using the free Google Docs, Google Docs, Google Sheets, Google Slides. And so um, if you're pushing back on that technology, and I'm, and, and I'm specifically talking to one person in this group right now, um, and Oscar, just to answer your question, all of the young kids are just using Google products because they're free. They're humans. They like getting stuff for free. They don't want to pay for it. Microsoft makes you pay for it. I know there's a, some free stuff now from Microsoft because they've had to change, but all the Google stuff is free. That's what they use and that's what they're used to. So searchable, it needs to be searchable, needs to be highly searchable so that they can use a search engine to search your system and find what they're looking for. So that is really gonna be, they're gonna be asking lots of questions. They're gonna be searching questions, searching how to do things in your organization. And that it's kind of the benefit of, you can do less training. You can scale more quickly by having searchable management systems um, for your organization. Uh, what about confidential if you use Google products? A hundred percent, like Google is exactly the same as Microsoft. We buy here a best practice Google Enterprise and it's, it's exactly the same. You've got to use a username and a password to log in. And in fact, Google is more secure than Microsoft. And I know Microsoft has got you guys all convinced that they're safe, but when you use Google Vault, the security system, which comes free or comes included with Google Enterprise, you can search every single user in your system and you can see what they've been looking at. So Google is more secure than Microsoft. They've got you guys completely bluffed. All of the tech people that are accredited with Microsoft, selling Microsoft, huge commissions. And this is not about conspiracy theory. This is about understanding. And so Google just don't do very much work to tell you that they're more secure. So we can see with our Google security system, we've got everything completely locked down um, and you can use the Google search engine to search through all of our documents. So we've been using Google Drive so Google Drive, Google Sheets, Google Docs, and Gmail here at Best Practice for 10 years. Uh, so we were very early onto that platform. Uh, it's all cloud-based. Uh, you don't have to say, there's no save button because it automatically saves everything. So Oscar, um, I'd encourage you to do some sort of looking at that um, and consider, you know, and, and it take, I look, I get it's a cost and it takes time, but yes, we pay a license fee. So the, the Google Docs and Sheets and products here at Best Practice are not free. We still pay for it but I don't have to train uh, the young team members that come and join best practice how to use it because they figure it out at home. But if I was to have Microsoft, then the younger generation coming into best practice, helping with marketing, social media, those kinds of things, I've got to train them to use Microsoft. So I kind of get the added advantage that they come in. So I think my point here is don't use Google, use what your audience uses. So if you do a survey of all of your staff and they've got Microsoft at home, stay on Microsoft. But if you do a survey of all of your uh, younger people, 
uh, it's everybody part of, uh, you know, they're using Google, so we use Google. Uh, Oscar, next question, did you say Google website? Yes, it, there's a product there called Google Sites and the best practice intranet here is on a Google site and it's locked down, it's only available internally. It's a Google site and you have to have a best practice Gmail account. So it's, we don't have, it's not Kobe at gmail.com, uh, it's Kobe at bestpractice.biz, that's my email address. Uh, and that is, I have to have that username, Google username and password to get into our system. So we still have email addresses like everybody else. It's not Gmail. My, my point is here that those users, yes, that's correct. Google Sites, uh, that's, um, uh, that is correct. David's just made a really interesting comment on LinkedIn. Google Suite is being used in schools. So schools here in Australia are training kids on Google. They're not training kids on Microsoft. And so Microsoft's kind of dead, uh, to be honest. Um, and unfortunately, I know that's sad for people, but it's, it's kind of time to move um, on that. And because they're teaching kids to search, like they're super dynamic. That's the audience. Those are the employees that we've got to provide safety systems for, safe instructions for, management systems and guidance and advice in the future and help in the future in terms of what we're doing. Um, so we want to be looking at that. So that's one of the kind of the reasons why we embrace video here at Best Practice. And I, and I want to be encouraging you guys to do more, you know, procedure based videos uh, for your organizations. We'll deal with that in another video. OK, good discussion there at the tail end. Strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats. We talked about that as part of management review. An opportunity is to consider having a searchable intranet. Uh, that allows your team members to find the the you know the the guidance and advice and how to do things to help your organization achieve your company's objectives okay the final questions if you didn't want to do the seven points i've talked about in your management review and you just want the really straight cutthroat management review for your organization it's four questions in thinking about the next 12 weeks what does success look like in thinking about the last 12 weeks what went wrong in thinking about the next 12 weeks, what could go wrong? And then what are we doing about that? Those are the four questions. If you wanna cut through it all and have a really tight, good looking management review, those are the four questions. Those are your risks, they're your opportunities. So it's it's risk-based thinking, it's opportunity-based thinking. What a what success look like? Those are our opportunities. What could go wrong? Um, you know, we could miss an opportunity. Uh, you know, what, is, uh, what has gone wrong? You know, that's our corrective and preventative action approach for the old school people listening uh, on this live stream. Okay, that's it. We try to keep them short and sweet. Uh, that's been about 45 minutes. So I'm trying to keep, uh, keep on time for you guys for our short Thursdays. Next week, more Q&A. Uh, it's the lead up to our break here at Best Practice. We're gonna be taking a two week break from the live streams over the, um, the festive season. Uh, we celebrate Christmas here at Best Practice. So we'll be celebrating Christmas and um, um, and David, thank you very much. David and Nick there, absolutely used Google suite of, for kids in school used extensively during the lockdown period here in Australia uh, in the pandemic. So Google Docs and that kind of stuff has been uh, really moving. Uh, okay, excellent. So I'm gonna be taking a two week break over the Christmas period. We've got, two, we've got two more live streams to go, which will be next week. And then we'll be a two or three week break. You'll still see lots of videos and content from us here at Best Practice. We're gonna come back in the new year. We're gonna be moving one of the live streams. Haven't quite worked out what that looks like yet. Luke and I were discussing that this morning uh, on our walk this morning. So I look forward to seeing you all in the live stream next week with more questions, more discussion, uh, lots more interaction because that really helps me help you guys. So I have a question for you guys. What's the most challenging thing with regards to your management system in 2021 let's get ready for 2021 what do you think the most challenging thing is going to be for your organization in your management system maybe the two or three things uh, tell me what's on your mind so i've got a question for you what's on your mind if you could send me an answer to that question in a direct message on linkedin uh, in a comment there on youtube or a direct message on instagram then i can answer those next week so i'm looking to know what's on your mind what's the most challenging or two or three most challenging things with your management system for 2021 and i'll answer all of those questions and i'll cover that content for you guys in our live streams next week okay if you don't see me on Instagram, if you don't see me on LinkedIn, if you don't see me on TikTok, you can follow me on all of those platforms. If you don't see me out in the street, if you don't see me on a walk in the morning, if you don't see me running around Sydney, if you don't see me out on my boat, if you don't see me out with my mates, if you don't see me at home with my family, 
you will definitely see me right here next time on YouTube on Best Practice TV. Thanks everybody for a great session today. Let me know in the comments if you're watching after recording, where you've been watching from. I'll try to get back to all of you. I'll see you next time right here on Best Practice TV. Bye for now.